What's up you guys, FSC Truck Shop. You would thought I had cleaned up this shop. Yeah, I did, then I got working again. <laughs> well, we're in the middle of working a lot of different problems all at one time. I literally just did get done tearing down a 12V71 Detroit. That's getting ready to go to machine shop. I'm starting to look at where I'm gonna take it, but I'm pretty sure I know where I'm gonna take it to to do all the machine shop work to it. We're gonna do a complete rebuild on it, not just an in-frame, obviously. With that, we got Orwell over here. Orwell is my 1984 Peterbilt. 362. Now I have the cab up because I just got done filming removing the starter. So today being Sunday, we got all kind of crap doing. The starter's out. I got to return it for a cord and go get a new one that had arrived, uh, I don't know, sometime late last week. So now what I got to do is this wheel seal right here. This wheel end decided to pop out and make a big old smelly mess. So that's got to get handled. So we're going to get started on that right now. When this wheel seal failed, it was one of those things where you wonder what was really going on. Now normally when they fail, you usually start seeing oil spraying out around your brakes because the seal, obviously your hub and your seal spits into your inside portion of your brakes, gets caught up in your drum, it runs like a big centrifuge and eventually it coats the whole damn thing with oil ruining your brakes and all of that. So when you step on your brakes, you start to smell it. And 8090 gear oil, well, it's very unmistakable. The thing is, it's behind you and it'll go away, so you don't really know it because as you're driving, the smell's behind you. But when you stop, that's when it all catches up. You start wondering. Now, I've been noticing a slight scent for a little bit, but I crawl underneath and I looked and I didn't see anything. Perhaps I didn't look close enough. That's possible too. Either way, the last time we used the truck, it was very obvious. At that point, the damage had been so severe that it was very obvious that it was leaking because it caked the whole inside of the inside tire and it also the drum is just completely caked in oil. We'll go underneath there in a little bit. And all that really happens is this internal hub is lubricated by the oil that's in your differential. It actually travels down your axle as it spins, keeping this whole section here oiled. And when that seal leaks, it just starts to sling it all over the place. So basically all we got to do right now is to jack up this wheel end, pull the two tires off, take these nuts, pull the axle off, and then take the drum, the brakes, take that nasty mess off, clean that. The brakes are garbage. Um, the brakes are, they got a few miles on them, so we do have new ones. Take the hub. I do have new bearings in case the bearings are cooked for whatever reason. It is possible that the bearings have gone out. I can't see why I did adjust them but then again I didn't do this side since the last time I well back when I redid or well actually so it's possible that I messed it up I did have an issue with the front end a while back too but that was the wrong part that was a weird confusing problem but either way I know it's possible that we have bad bearings but I shouldn't but if I do I have them if I don't well then I have a spare set for the shelves now don't I all right, enough yapping. You guys are probably already bored hearing me talk. All right, let's start getting this job done. The G plan is I'm gonna lift it with this bottle jack. A little 12 ton hydraulic bottle jack. And we're gonna put this horse jack stand underneath the shock mount right there. This is the left side of the, this is the right side of the truck.
Now Orwell has these two piece studs. That's why we haven't changed out these rims yet in aluminum because these all have to be made longer, replaced with longer ones. These inner studs thread onto the stud that's on the hub and that holds the inner tire on. Once these come off, the inner tire will come off. This adapter here, that socket, does both. It has the square drive on the inside and the hex drive on the outside. They're all loose now because we took off the... They all... They're loose because when we loosen up the other ones, typically these loosen up. In fact, one stayed on the rim that we just took off. If you look, these are beveled. Now it rests on the hub, but these are stud centric. In other words, the studs is what centers the rim to the hub, not the hub itself. The ones with the washers, those are hub centric. You have to know the difference. This right here is common. The nut that holds onto the outer stud, sometimes we'll just pull the outer stud out. And then, you know, how do you take this apart? There's a trick to it. And I own the tools for the trick. Half inch impact gun. Half inch to three quarter adapter. This will attach to the stud. Three quarter drive. This attaches to the stud. And this tool holds the nut from turning. Simply put that there. Attach this to the stud. Make sure I'm going the right way. I'm going the wrong way. That's what I thought. There you go. Stud or nut. Nut, stud, empty rim. And that's the tool for it, along with your socket. Alrighty, boys and girls, who here knows what a caging bolt is? Well, not a cage in bolt, caging bolt. That's what this is. Now I have the cab jacked up. Now if I aired the truck up and pushed in the yellow knob, I would release the brakes and a slack adjuster would come in. But I'm not going to put the cab down just to air the truck up. Also, I don't want to air up the air suspension. It's already deflated. So, what you do is you take this and it hooks in there on the inside. Twist it and it pulls out. And then this nut, you tighten down. And what that does is it does the same as if you're putting air to your brakes, it compresses your spring brakes, thus releasing your parking brake. So I'm applying it there. And now, with my deep well socket, I'll tighten. We shall loosen the parking brake. Don't need a lot, just need enough. I don't have a very long deep well. Okay. 
brakes are released. You can see that. Brakes are caged. Excellent. So now we can get out. That's all we have to do under here for the time being. Well, we're getting ready to make a big old mess here anyway. Side notes. <laughs> you don't want to know me. All right, boys and girls, they stand corrected. I will have to loosen the brake adjustment on the slack adjuster. That's this right here. I got them loose, but they're not loose enough. I could do it without the adjustment the extension. Sounds terrible, don't it? But look at the big gap now. See? That drum will slide off nice. There you go. One big oily mess. Ugh. Yuck, yuck, yuck. That's why I have a case of brake clean. Now we're going to make a little bit of a mess. I think these are three quarters. Oh no, much bigger. Much bigger. <laughs> 15 sixteenths is a winner. Alrighty, now. The weight of the truck is on the hub. That's what a full floating rear does, similar to your three quarter or one ton pickup trucks. The twisting action, the torque, is done by this axle. You can take this axle off without taking the weight off the truck because it's the differentials housing, the cake, so to speak, that holds the weight. The axle does the twisting only. Not like a car or a half ton. To be honest, I'm not sure how modern trucks are, like brand new stuff. Do you know how these are? Call these full floating rears. want to know nothing. Just a wrap. There we go. It's coming a little. know me very well does she I keep grabbing the brakes you to brace myself all 
I'm thinking I should put a little bit of Never Seize on that. Not a lot of oil's coming up. It's low because it's been leaking, and this end is up, so what was in there would have leaked back, but, or out. Some guys don't put this gasket, I do. Although, clearly I should throw a little bit of Never Seize on them studs. Now the hub is completely loose from the differential, see? There's your axle shaft. Now that I have the axle out, this is the jam nut, the outer nut. It's a two nut system because clearly it's a tube. You can't drop a cotter pin through it. This is the jam nut that holds the bearing adjustment properly. So what I want to show you guys is there is a washer in there. I get the angles good. There's a washer in between there. And this tang over here is bent over to keep the nut from backing off. I don't know if that's the way it's supposed to be, but that's how it was when I got the truck. So I've just been repeating what was done. So we're going to head and hammer that out rather bend it straight and it will take that nut and back it off. I don't know how well you guys will be able to see this. There we go. It's just the one. Yep, this one. All right, so now I just got to get the socket to back that jam nut out. I do have a torque wrench to do this. But I hate using torque wrenches to just loosen stuff, so use a piece of roll bar material. There we go. Out comes your washer. Note that keyway on the top. There we go. Note the keyway here and there. That's how that jam nut works. And then the next one is your bearing preload. And that literally ought to now be finger tight because We've completely taken all torque off of it. It is the same size. There we go. What a yucky mess this is. I think there's a clean way to do it. And then bobble this around. And I'll come your bearing. I can't get my fingers in there. Come on. I'm only using the tools only because I can't get my finger in there. I'm trying to show you the bearing. All right, we'll do it this way.
Tell my little buddy. Do you want to get out of there? Guess not. Oh, I was trying to avoid that. There's your wheel bearing. Big old bearing. Size of my hand compared to that bearing, right? Give a quick look at that bearing. Looks fine. Slide this out. And out it goes. That's it right like that so it'll drip. There's your spindle, your seal mating surface, which is the axle, snout, which, you know, disgusting. And then your brakes. Next we have to take the brakes off and start cleaning up this disgusting mess. And then we'll have to press pause and start another video. Gonna loosen the brakes the rest of the way. You can look at that S cam, you can see that the brakes can be collapsed a little bit tighter. Be helpful if I could see it. I'd probably reach it in here. I'm trying not to take a total grease bath here. That should be good. I just snapped them out. Pop that out of there. The next one's got to go in inboard way, so that's pretty loose. There's just no easy way to do it without completely getting oiled up and disgusting like I said what do you guys got going there right where's my damn rack These are real difficult to do when they're brand new. It's the spring stretches out a little bit. And you just take the shoe, wrap it over. Next one basically falls out. I'm gonna find a place on your clean shop floor to make now a mess. Right here we'll do just fine. This is why you buy like a case of brake clean. This is a used one I had laying around.
Get a brand new one, it'll work a lot better. Alrighty, I'm gonna bust this old seal out. Get the bearing out, I clean the other ones. This is the bearing. This is the bearing, the outer bearing. It's fine, I'll put it here with the other stuff. I'm gonna get the seal out so I can get the other bearing out. And what I usually do is just, when I hit my hand, with a crappy screwdriver, Try to hammer a hole, but the screwdriver really don't have a good tip. Matter of fact, I broke it off. Doing exactly what I'm doing now, in fact. There we go. Now we got a hole. Poke through. <laughs> ah, it loves me. Yeah. Someone probably makes a really nice tool to do this job. There we go. One junk seal. Now we must segregate the two bearings. I don't remember if there's an inner and an outer, if they're the same size or not. So we're going to be sure to not mix the two bearings together. There's marks on them like a pattern, but they're not they're not pitted or worn out or nothing. Inner, outer. Seven oh five. Well, I have different part numbers. No, they are definitely different. Excellent. I worried that worried me. Bearings are good. Not a clean to hub. Oh.